So welcome everyone to da, 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 my first uh, wonderful drawing session for this year. Um, as I said before the camera was on, I'm going to repeat that. I found out that today is the Chinese New Year and this uh, new, moon, new moon, the first new moon of the year, which is actually the perfect time to vision, set intentions, really look into the future, into what this year 2023 is going to bring to all of us. Um, I didn't know that when I made the date, but I thought it's perfect timing. <laughs> so today we will look at 2023 in a fun, um, creative perspective. Okay. So uh, before we start drawing, um, I like to start with a very short meditation to tune in so we can all and also I can just <laughs> calm down <laughs> before we start the drawing so I'd like to invite you to just sit comfortably place your feet on the ground feel the ground under you if it feels comfortable you can close your eyes for a moment and just take a few deep breaths and just feel into what is now in this moment? How does your body feel right now? How is your heart, your emotions? What's on your mind right now? And then you can start try to deepen your breath a little bit. Maybe let go of any tension that you feel in your body. Calm any emotions that are rising up. And just let some of the thoughts that are really not important right now pass through like clouds in the sky. Then I invite you to envision, imagine your year 2023 in front of you. And trust whatever comes up. If it's a vision, if it has a form, maybe it's a color, maybe it's very complicated and complex, maybe it's just absolutely simple, maybe it's even a being. Or maybe it's not visual at all. Maybe it's just a feeling, a thought, even a sound. Whatever comes to you, welcome this 2023. And be with it for a moment without trying to change it. And ask to be shown your visions ask for support in whatever you want to create this year and i invite you to put a hand on your heart or maybe both hands on your heart and bringing love compassion, healing energy to yourself and to this year. And then I invite you to rub your hands together and bring the energy into your hands. Bring this year 2023 into your hands. Feel the blood flow, energy flow, warm. And then just place your hands over your eyes for a moment and invite visions. Create this connection between your eyes and your hands so that those visions can flow out onto the paper. Breathe into it one more deep breath. And let it all go. 
And then you can start rubbing your face, waking yourself up, maybe letting your hands flow to your head, to your neck, or anywhere else where they want to go right now. So today, I thought we were going to start with a very, very short writing exercise before we draw. Sometimes we do that um, before a neurographic drawing to activate um, our brains. Today is also to kind of bring out ideas because we want to look at specific ideas as well. So when you envision your year, maybe there's already things that you plan, maybe there's already things that you're looking forward to, maybe there's things that you wish for, maybe there's just things that are not very clear, but you kind of feel that you want more action in your life or more fun in your life or something like that. So we're going to just write for two minutes whatever comes to your mind when you think of 2023. And it can be anything. Okay, so everybody, piece of paper, pen. And we're going to do two minutes from now on. Okay, so we're at two minutes now. And you can just put this piece of paper next to you um, while we draw. We don't necessarily have to bring all the single elements into the drawing, but we might bring some of them in. So this can also be a list that kind of translates into your drawing. Okay. So what I'm using to draw today is a little bit of a thicker pen. I have these Stabilo pens. Um, I have thin ones too. You can use any pen. Um, and I use colored pencils. So these are my two materials that I use. You can use other color coloring materials. You can use whatever pen you have. I'm going to start off with a pen. I'm actually going to start off with my thin pen. Um, so this first part, now I'm just doing so you can see what I'm talking about. So you don't have to do this. Um, I'm going to do divide my paper in four. You don't have to do this. You can just imagine this. Oh, and it's totally invisible too. Okay, so I guess I'm going to do the thick one. So I have four directions. Okay. Um, I like to think of my year in 
larger areas than months. So I like to think of it as spring, summer, autumn, and winter. That for me has the biggest impact energetically. You know, the energy of spring is different from the energy of summer, the energy of autumn, the energy of winter. <laughs> Very nice, okay. Um, I hope that resonates with you. So um, I was thinking of going through all the different months, but then I thought, no, actually it makes more sense if we look at it from an energetic point of view, um, we can go through these four phases. And they are, of course, not separated like they are when I make a cross. So that's why I said you don't have to make the cross. You can just imagine that. I'm just making that so you, it's, it becomes kind of visual. Um, now, the first thing that we're going to look at is the things that you already know you want to create or that are already on the way this year. Things that are probably going to happen. Um, we're going to do seven to eight. So you can choose seven to eight, either from the list that you just made, or maybe there's things that you have in your mind. We're going to add them to this picture in circles and kind of think of when are those things happening. For me, a lot of things that I know are going to happen are going to happen in spring. Um, I'm just going to start drawing so that you know what I'm talking about. So I will travel to Germany in spring. This is a very, very big thing for me. So it's going to be my major, main, exciting event in spring. So I put this here. I didn't realize it was so big <laughs> because actually I have a few other things to do there. But I got a little bit more space. Um, also in spring, I'm gonna start teaching again. Um, so I'm gonna start teaching all the algorithms and that will actually go through the entire year, but it starts in spring. So I'm gonna make a circle for that here. And that's also quite a big event for me, quite a big thing that I'm really, really looking forward to. And now you can just look through your year. Maybe there's something in summer that you're really looking forward to. I want to go to the seaside in summer. I'm not sure if we're really gonna make it, but I'm just gonna make a circle for it. It's gonna be a, a shorter trip. So it's not gonna be quite as big as my holiday to Germany, my vacation. Um, I definitely want to offer a workshop in autumn. That is very, very important to me that I've done for the last four years. So that one's gonna get a big circle. Um, I forgot to say, maybe in this picture, actually it's gonna help you to name the circles. So you can always do that. So I might actually do that right here in Germany. Rhythms. Yep. Um, and then I want to also teach something in winter. That's a new program that I'm creating. Well, my year kind of circles around teaching a lot. Um, yes, internal goals are 100%. Um, yeah, 100%, you can use internal goals as well. So anything, you no, know, if uh, there's something that you want to create for yourself, then I think putting it in this framework, just feel into where the energy feels the most uh, like the strongest, exactly. If it's not tied to a season, just feel like what kind of energy does it have? You no, know? if you think of spring, spring is kind of the time of where we start things, we begin, where like everything around us starts to grow. Then summer is of course where it's just like the fruits are ripening and all of that. And then in autumn is the time where we harvest. And then winter is the time where we 
and kind of go back down and slow down and go back to ourselves. So with internal goals, feel into that. And of course, you can kind of just make the, uh, the circles close to the center as well, if they um, cover several seasons. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, internal goal. I'm, I'm going to actually also set an internal goal. And I know it carries the energy of autumn and winter. So as I said, we're going to start with like seven or eight. Not too many. Um, we can add more later. Um, I actually forgot one very, very important thing that's going to happen in spring and in summer. I'm going to put it into the summer one because I think then the energy of um, this is really going to go out. The dance class that I'm teaching, very, very exciting. And it kind of has this energy of summer very much. So now I have seven, okay. Now, oh, you can first kind of look at your picture and see, okay, um, if I imagine those are the big things, the big goals that I'm setting in a way, the big visions that I have for this year, how do I feel about it? Do I um, judge myself for it, for example? No, do I think that I, it's not going to happen anyways? Or... Um, am I very motivated to do it? Just ask yourself, how do you feel about the things that you put on there right now? And actually, I'm going to put another one right here. Because I want to acquire another certification as well. So now I have eight. It feels kind of full already, my year. <laughs> I uh, tend to overwhelm myself. But now we want to connect everything. Now I'm going to go ahead and just do a tiny, tiny little demonstration for anyone who has not done a graphica before. I should have asked that in the beginning, but I guess the most people are familiar with no graphica. So um, you can just draw lines. And I'm really going to say just draw lines. The only rule we have is every single circle at some point has to be touched by a line. Where they go, which direction they have, does not matter. They start at the edge of the paper. They go to another edge. And they pass through the space somehow. Um, now, for anyone who has never heard the word neurographic line, um, a neurographic line, the way we work with it, I like to imagine them as like rivers or roots or any natural thing that is not predetermined. So when I draw a line, I'm just going to draw one line here. I do not determine where it goes. It just goes. I follow it, I feel it, I am aware of what it does in my inside. So the way we draw lines is more from a feeling perspective than from what it should look like. So we now want to let go of any shoulds. Um, I really like this image because when I look at my year, no matter how many plans I make, no matter how well thought out my plans are, life is just going to do its thing, no matter if I like it or not. No, no matter if I think it should go like that or not, it's just going to go. And this is what I experience with the lines. So just allow yourself to explore this picture with the line. And as I said, they don't have to have a constant direction. They can start wherever they want to start. 
the only rule that we have is they touch all the circles at some point and they always go from one edge to the other edge. And the other edge does not have to be on the opposite side. It can go from top to side, top to bottom, however they want. We really, at this point, let go of our preconceptions of the things that we plan, because no matter how much we plan, there's always a kind of element of randomness in a way. And so with the line, we can bring that into our drawing. I'm gonna draw just as many lines as I feel. Um, sometimes I feel that I wanna go over a line several times or some lines they meet. That's totally fine, they can do that. And at some point, whenever I feel that everything is connected, I want every circle to become part of a web of circles. Then I'm gonna start the second very, very important process, which we call rounding. So you see that my picture now looks very chaotic and that is totally fine because that's life. That's what life looks like sometimes. <laughs> I'm gonna draw a second line here and show you what I mean by rounding. The way I like to look at it is that we look in between the lines. In Nographica, sometimes we say that every line is a thought and I like this notion of reading between the thoughts. So I will go in and just follow the spaces in between. And by doing that, I, instead of having cross points that are like an X that have sharp corners that create little triangles, by going around it, hence rounding, I create connection points. So what I do is actually connect my thoughts. And I look at the spaces between. And this is kind of interesting too, probably when we look at our year ahead, that there are things that we plan, things that are really planned out and things that we want to achieve and we set goals and have wishes and all of that, but then there's life and life kind of happens in between. And then there's things that we just don't have any control over. So we want to go into this feeling, into this kind of notion of in between. Um, so I go throughout my picture and I'm gonna say, before I even start, it does not have to be perfect. If you can't round every single corner, don't stress yourself out, it's totally fine. So I just go to where it feels important. I follow my intuition and I just follow some of the lines that call me you know, where I feel like, okay, this is kind of interesting. And so I meet my goals in a different way. I soften them, softening the corners. And maybe I can let go of a strict idea of a way that I thought it had to look so that I can actually be open to the magic of life. Sometimes life brings us what we wish for and it just looks different than we thought. So if we're too focused on just my way or no way, then we might actually miss what's happening. So we want to go into this energy of welcoming the chaos in a way, or welcoming what else wants to show up. Maybe there are things that I did not plan, but they will be very impactful for my life. They will actually 
make this year special. And while you do the rounding, really, really get in touch with yourself, with your body, with your emotions, with your thoughts. See if you, how you react to this, no? how does it feel? Do you think, no, things have to go my way? Or can you welcome the surprises that might actually come into your life? Can you welcome that the things that you really, really want and plan might actually end up looking different than you thought? So we actually want to unlearn perfection here because sometimes perfection just stunts us and might be much more growth if we can take life as it comes. I'm going to just quiet down for a few moments so you can actually listen to your own thoughts. We're going to give this about five, six, maybe seven minutes. And as I said, if it doesn't perfectly round everything, don't worry. This is not about perfection. And you can also always go back to rounding later. So if, it's, if you don't like it at some point, you can round some more. Um, I like to connect the lines to the edge of the paper. The reason why we do that is because that shows the mind that the line will always go on. In Neurographica, we say that the edge of the paper is not the actual edge of my drawing or of um, this vision. You know, if I, I could, for example, add another paper and I could continue the line. This is why I really like to go to the edge of the paper. Um, yeah, that was a question there, sorry. Um, yeah, so I think it makes sense to draw to the edge of the paper. Not every single line, of course. I mean, if there's a line that just connects between other lines, that is okay too. But if you have an end of the line, it makes sense to connect it to the edge of the paper because that way it goes on. If you have a line that's somewhere in the middle and it connects to other lines, then it just goes on in the other line. But we want this continuity. Because this is also life is bigger than us. No, this is like my little world, my little ideas of what I want to do. And with those lines that go out to the edge of the paper, I connect to the world out there. I connect to everyone that I want to invite, for example, into my classes. Well, I'm inviting them 
with these lines because they have to, your idea may fit right here and our lines may connect. So we give it another three minutes. Time check for everyone. But as I said, it's absolutely all right if not everything's perfectly rounded. We want to create this feeling of connectedness. You know, everything is a web. Everything works together. Even if I make dates for the things that I create, they are still influenced by everything else that I want to do. It is all one in a way. And by connecting the lines like that, we can really feel into the sensation of having everything connected. And I would like to invite you to breathe. Always remember to breathe. I sometimes hold my breath. <laughs> so if you recognize that, just take a deep breath, exhale, long exhale, let everything go. Oh, and invite new energy to come in. Okay. Okay, now I will look at my drawing and look if I see more circles. As I said, there's the things that we kind of plan, the big things, but then there's a hundred million little things as well. So I will just go through my drawing and wherever I feel that there should be a circle and I trust my intuition 100% with that. So just look at your drawing and when you feel there's a circle, this is a circle. I have like a, a line that looks almost like a half a circle or something or there's just an empty spot where I feel there needs to be something. I add another little circle. Now I can ask myself what this is. Maybe I have an idea, maybe I don't. Well, that's perfectly fine. If you have an idea what that is, if there's more little things that you have planned, for example, anyways, just make the space for it and you can um, write in again what it is. I have some circles in my trip to Germany here. So that's kind of exciting too. There's, of course, a lot of stuff gonna happen there. <laughs> so I just make space for that. And now we can just go through, draw as many circles as you want, basically. Of course, at some point, it's going to be enough. But with that, I invite you to really trust your intuition. And every time I add a circle now, I round it immediately. So I integrate every new circle into the web that's already here. If you ever feel that there needs to be another line somewhere, that is absolutely okay too. You can always add more lines. And as I said now, um, if you just add a line in between that connects a little circle to a big one, for example, or something like this, you don't have to go from edge to edge. You can just integrate a line into the web that's already there. The important part is that everything is connected, just like in life. Well, just in real life, everything's connected. So we also do that in the drawing and connect everything. And as I said, just trusting and feeling. Apparently there's some more things for me in summer. Summer's kind of the time where 
my energy is actually a little bit lower because it's so hot where I'm at and I'm not really, the heat is really hard for me. So I don't plan to do too many things in summer, but life tells me this summer, I'm gonna have energy for a few things. And then there's a few more here. So circles can of course overlap. There can be circles inside of circles. Now we're just really looking at the richness of life. Oh, there is always more. There's so many days, 365 days. So we have a lot of time for a lot of different things. And we just bring them in and we feel always go back to feeling into it. And ask yourself if it needs anything else somewhere. Um, oh, you can, in theory, of course, add other shapes. I would recommend to only add other shapes if you know how to do that. So if you're uh, a little bit more advanced, have worked with Neurographic a little bit longer, then of course you're free to add other shapes. I am working with circles here because um, I can't be sure how, how um, experienced everyone is. And especially in the beginning, it, um, it's just easier to work with circles safer in a way. Um, Pavel wrote a text about the dangers of Neurographica once. <laughs> so it's, um, but yeah, it's of course. And if you feel that there's another shape somewhere, trust your intuition. With that, I would always say, trust yourself. If you feel that there is another shape somewhere, then by all means, go with it. I want more stuff in my autumn, but maybe it's okay as it is. So what I'm realizing in my picture is a lot of my smaller circles are inside the bigger ones, which kind of means that my things that I planned, they have secret aspects there that I may not be aware of yet. So that's what I mean when you can ask yourself what the little circles are. Well, are they additional experiences? For me, this is probably a lot of teachings, a lot of um, teachings for me, a lot of things I need to learn. So I welcome all of that. I welcome all the lessons that I will receive. So um, you can still add more circles later if you want to. I will uh, move on to coloring a little bit. <clears throat> oh, actually, okay. Gonna, we're gonna give it another two minutes more circles or more shapes or whatever your image needs. No, we, we can, every now and then I like to just step back from it and look at it and ask myself, okay, what else is there? What else do I need? And I keep looking at this one here. So I think, okay, so there must be another circle in here as well. Sometimes when circles just go in other circles, it raises the complexity. There's more aspects to a thing. But while I draw, I actually don't interpret too much. Most of the time I'm just looking and feeling into it and adding wherever I feel it goes. 
And then at the end, I can interpret and kind of look at what all of that may mean for me. I feel there needs to be something here. Maybe it's actually a bigger thing. I totally forgot to say that, but now I'm showing it. Circles can go over the edge as well, or figures can go over the edge. So if there's something that is bigger than this year, for example, this is what I feel right now, that in autumn there's going to be something that goes beyond this year, then it's allowed to be there as well. And it can go over the edge. And this year, I'm only going to see a part of it. And maybe in the future, I will see the rest of it. I also feel that this one needs another line. So I'm going to add another line from here so that it's well connected. to the rest of my drawing and I go back and round some more. Ooh, yeah, that's a big one there, okay. So I don't need to know all that's gonna happen. That is <laughs> really where I trust. Uh, for me personally, trust is something that I need to learn again. So I use this as a kind of lesson in trusting. Trusting that it's going to be okay and that whatever this big thing is, I'm going to be able to handle it. But I definitely feel my body is all signaling right now. Well, this is something that creates a reaction. But it makes my picture more whole. When I look at the picture now, it feels right. So it just has to be like that. So this was a demonstration of trusting your intuition <laughs> for everyone. Now let's go to colors. Colors is one of the things that I do completely intuitive to. I had my colored pencils here. The red one was on top. I picked it. I see another question. Um, April says, I found myself making a line around the whole composition through the outer circles. <laughs> if that means anything is yours to say. Oh, the meaning of the things is always the meanings that you give them. I would say it does mean something for sure. And a line through all the outer ones would bring everything together in a way. You know, it's connecting all the outer circles somehow. So you can ask yourself, why is that important for you? How does that feel to you? But yeah, of course, I, I'm not going to try to give you answers. You can still ask questions, though. Okay, so now I picked my red pen that I felt drawn to. And I'm going to go into my picture wherever I feel it needs to go. So we're not coloring single figures. We're not coloring single little segments or something. We're coloring larger areas. That's the one rule about coloring. You don't want to, I mean, sometimes it just happens like that. Sometimes the color just calls to be in one little spot. But usually what I like to do is I go and just start wherever I feel that it starts. And then I see where the color wants to go. I allow the color to guide me. And coloring is a way for us to overcome our inner boundaries. Now, 
the picture that we have so far has a lot of lines, a lot of little segments, very detailed. And now we want to go and bring the things to, together in a larger way. Where I can still see all of these details, but I will not with a color focus on just one part. I always focus on the whole. So when I feel into the color, I kind of see, okay, it's kind of down here somewhere. Where will it go from here? Color always wants to move. And uh, maybe it wants to move somewhere here. So I trust whatever my intuition is, whatever my first hunch is. And I just go with it without even thinking about it. That's um, <laughs> for me, the best method of using color is not to think about it. Because of course it changes the picture a lot. We all went through some kind of education that told us how to do things and how to not do things. And maybe we carry some of that with us. I definitely do, I definitely did. And for me, coloring really brought this freedom of being able to cross the lines. I don't have to stay within the lines. I can go beyond. And in a way, it's also going beyond all the ideas, all the plans. Now I bring energy into this. Color carries energy. I'm like doing the red here now and I feel like, wow, it's like almost this flame going through my picture because I'm going to hope this is not going to be a wildfire. Um, you can use other coloring materials. I use color pencils. We can use whatever supply you have. Um, of course, every supply brings with it possibilities, you know, and kind of um, some things you can do really well with colors, some things you can't really do well. If you want to work with watercolors, for example, then hopefully you had a waterproof pen that you worked with in the beginning. Otherwise, it's going to smear and be difficult. <laughs> but yeah, if you have other coloring materials, you are very free to use them. The only rule that I make with color is to follow your intuition, to go and move the color and really allow it to move through the picture. You know, like my red that started down here now went all over here. It's in everything. I like to use colored pencils because I can layer. So what we can do is layer different colors on top of each other. Um, you don't have to fully color the segment. Uh, I can bring just a little bit of this color in here. I can shade. I can go over it as many times as I want. But the most important part about coloring is to feel into the energy of the color, to really experience it and allow yourself to bring that into your picture. So in this picture, I would, if I don't know which color to use, I always say, use the color that makes you feel better, use your favorite color, use the color that makes you feel happy because this is your year. So what energy do you want there? What energy do you wanna feel? How do you wanna feel? So I wanna feel a lot of warmth, a lot of love, a lot of fire energy apparently in a positive way. So what does the color mean to you personally? There's of course many, many ways to interpret colors, but we're gonna not go into that at all. Right here, there's color courses also in Neurographica, but for these classes here, I like to just go with absolutely intuitive. What does it feel like for you? without my interpretation in it. And because I talked a whole lot and everybody 
can feel into their own. Let's do 10 minutes of coloring quietly. I'm gonna try and stay quiet so that you can actually hear your own thoughts. And enjoy your coloring, just really enjoy it. Become a child, you know? turn into this, tap into this inner child energy and just play with it. It's, there is no right or wrong. There is no good or bad. There is just, oh, I love this green right here. That's what you want to feel. This is great. This is absolutely what I want to feel right now. This is beautiful. Your personal feeling of beauty. Touch that. Support that. Bring that into your drawing. Because this is your year. So make it the most colorful, the most beautiful year. Oh, and I forgot to say, you don't have to color everything too. So white areas are absolutely completely all right. We can always work with white as well. And I'm gonna say one more thing to the white areas because sometimes it's very interesting. Uh, if we leave white spots, then that in a way means that the energy is not determined yet. No, we kind of leave it open as well. So allow some open space as well. Allow some whatever energy wants to come in. Maybe there's something that, yeah, you would have never chosen, but it's gonna really empower you, make your life hopefully better or it's just an experience that you need to have for some reason or another. So be open and you can leave some of this openness in the picture as well. But most of all, trust your feeling.
Oh, okay, we're going to give it two more minutes, just so you know. Uh -uh. Camera, Tony. Picture moved all around. Okay, so two more minutes. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And you can, of course, continue coloring more later. Huh. Okay. What if I don't like how it looks? Yeah, that's always a good question. Ask yourself what would make you like it in the first place? Why don't you like it? Geographica can, of course, show us that, for example, some of the plans that we're making, some of the wishes that we have are actually not for us. Um, that was one of the things that I worked out in a lot of my drawings was that things that I wanted were actually not beautiful to me, if, I, if I'm going to say it like that. Um, so when the picture will always show you something that's happening inside you, and if you don't like it, then ask yourself questions. Ask yourself, what part of it don't you like? Like, don't you like the color? Is the energy not right? Um, are there elements that are too big, too small, not in the right place? Um, allow it to inform you, allow it to help you. 
So the way I teach Neurographica is really not so much about creating beautiful pictures or what it looks like or what, um, what style you use or something. Of course, I know a lot of people use this as an art style where it's much more focused on the aesthetic. What we are trying to achieve here is an inner aesthetic. I mean, my picture is, of course, not like the greatest piece of art, but when I look at it, it absolutely makes me happy. I absolutely like the colors that are in there. I think it's super chaotic, but it makes sense for me that it's so chaotic. So allow your picture to work with you. And if you're judgmental, see, how do you judge yourself? Oh, if you think that's not right, what is... Like, how do you use that against yourself? You know, what are the moments when you tell yourself that you're not right? And then see how you can soften that, how you can take away the judgment, how you can accept the things, how you can find ways to allow yourself to yeah, kind of still enjoy your life. No, life is not perfect. Life is not a perfect piece of art. Life can absolutely be messy, can absolutely look different than we think. And our job is to learn from it, to take out the lessons that we have received and to still make it another day, you know, to still find another vision. So I know that's probably not the answer you were hoping for. <laughs> but yeah, ask yourself, what are the things that you criticize about yourself, about your plans and wishes? How can you find that in the picture? And then how can you soften that? How can you forgive yourself if you need to forgive yourself or be a little bit nicer to yourself? How can you like yourself more and judge yourself not so harshly maybe? And then see if you can find a way to make it where you like it more. You know, as I said, you can always add more things. You can round more, draw another line, change the color somewhere. I mean, at some point there are pictures that just have the function of waking us up to something, of waking us up to an inner pattern that we're living out. And then it's okay sometimes to just say, okay, this is a terrible picture. I'm just gonna throw it in my closet, maybe never look at it again, but I would always say, keep the picture and look at it at the end of the year and see, okay, so what does this have to do with my year? But you can always start a new one. No, this does not have to determine anything right now. You can always start the next one. I hope that helps. Okay, now I want to draw some more lines. Um, this time we're kind of going to do a little bit what um, one of the comments before when I think April said that she drew a line that connected a bunch of circles together. <laughs> so we can do something like that now. Um, I would like to invite you to draw a line and it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. It can really be a neurographic line that goes through your year from spring to summer to autumn to winter. And that closes it and makes it this one year. And as I said, like allow the line to just be as it is, go where it needs to go. It will of course interact with what's already there. So just move through the month, through the year, then meet your line again and go through it again. Feel where does it want to go now? Maybe it wants to go slightly different. Maybe you bring it more together. 
So I'm kind of trying to follow the same line again, but I will allow it to be slightly different as well, if it wants to be. So what I want to do here is bring my life together. And this, of course, I did like a, a large one now. You can also do this closer to the center. But kind of trust yourself. Where is it going? There's one area for me where every time I go, it looks a little bit different. Every time I look at this part of my year, it will look a little bit different to me. And it's very interesting because that is the part where I start teaching the algorithms. And I do have different feelings <laughs> for that. It does look a little bit different sometimes. Sometimes I'm more excited. Sometimes I'm a little bit scared. So I bring my year together. I make it one. And now I kind of have a pretty good pathway that I'm going. So I'm going to stop. And now I will follow this line. Now this kind of crazy figure that I created now and round it out again. Connect this line to everything that it touches. And that will, of course, bring me maybe into thinking about all the things again, We're kind of reflecting about it, reflecting about all the ideas and the plans that I have. And I invite you to just bring this sensation of maybe it's going to be different than I think. And allow that, make peace with that. Visioning does not mean that we get to control what happens. Visioning means that we make space for it to look even greater, even better, more beautiful than we could have ever imagined. And I definitely see that there's a lot of energy here. Mm. was in different pathways, which also allows me to approach the things that I want to do in different ways. Okay, thank you, Wend, for being here. Mm -hmm. And observe yourself again. Every time we round, we get the opportunity to feel inside again, to integrate the things that we bring onto the paper. And we get to observe ourselves again. I feel my body's tingling. I feel a lot of excitement inside myself. Especially when I go down here again. Oh. Mm. Always remember to breathe and take your time with that. This is really a work of integrating now and bringing everything together. Saying like, okay, there's a lifeline that goes through my year.
that brings everything together, makes it all one. And now I already spoke about the lifeline. Now we want to bring this line out into the world as well. Because as I said, now we have this connection to the outer world, to the people around us, larger world. So we also want to connect to that. So what I'm going to do now is connect this circle line to the outside, which I will do by drawing a little bit more. I'm going into my line and I follow it a little bit. And then whenever I feel it needs to go out, I go out again. So I actually draw a line that goes from one edge to another, but it passes through a part of my line. And I can feel into that. And for some reason I started around autumn time. So I can also look at that. Oh. Bottom time, I'm connecting to the world outside and going out there. And I can follow this direction, this feeling as much as I need to, as many times as you need to until you feel that it's connected. And I'm going to do this at another point as well. Kind of want to go here somewhere and again I go into my line now I actually go the other direction interestingly so that's okay too doesn't have to follow one direction I go back and forth and every time I do that I also strengthen my big connecting line Hmm. Breathing a little bit in between, connecting a little bit more. Hmm. Rounding again, making sure that everything's in flow. Everything is one big flow. And this flow at some points connects to the outside world. So that is the sensation that we want to establish here. I think I want to do one more down here somewhere. Got to go like this, and connect all parts. And here I don't have to worry about if it's the right time. No, you can go backwards and forwards. It's just an energy. The energy is flowing through my year in all kinds of directions. And that's also things that are connected sometimes. They are connected through different timelines, timelines that don't, don't go straight like ours, like our idea where we have everything going from spring to summer to autumn to winter. There's things that don't go that way. And so we also bring that in. We also bring this kind of cosmic energy in. of things that are connected in different ways, in time zones that we don't understand with our brains, but maybe we can understand them with our hearts. I know that there's something in spring here with algorithms that goes into summer. Maybe it's my teaching path. So I can also, of course, interpret those things. No? And I usually, when I interpret, it's not that I try to interpret, I just, some kind of meaning suddenly appears in my mind and then I listen to it. This is what we do, we listen. My word for this year was actually listening. So I'm happy to bring this into this picture as well. And with that, I have enough connections now. I have like three going out this way, three going out this way which also makes sense to me because the spring and the autumn time are kind of like the times that I feel the most energetic. So when I look at it, it makes sense to me. When you look at yours, I hope it makes sense to you. 
for everyone who's watching the recording, thank you very much um, for being here or uh, joining this class with me. Um, I would love to see your drawings as always. I have a Facebook page and a Facebook group um, that you can share in and you can also just write me an email. I will uh, provide contact information and everything under this video whenever I post it. And of course, now I already almost forgot, I wanted to share my great plans for this year. I'm just gonna do this super, super quick. If anyone has questions for their life, you can ask the questions. For anyone else, I will teach the basic user course in February and probably again in summer, but much more um, exciting probably for many people. I will teach the other algorithms two to nine this year going to attempt to do it. It's in my picture, so it's probably going to happen. Um, I'm, I will start with algorithm two in April because I'm going to be gone in March. And then uh, in April, I will actually start teaching the algorithms. I'm planning to do an information evening in March sometime where I will actually talk a little bit more about the algorithms, what they are, who they are for, why they're so great and exciting. Um, so this is going to be interesting for everyone who did the basic user course. So you have to have the first step. You can, of course, if you don't have that now, you can do that with me in February. Um, and the algorithms will also be interesting for specialists, for example, because they give you more things that you can work with. So that's all I'm going to say for now. I thank you very much for being here. And I uh, hope to see your pictures, hope to hear from you, hope to have you in all my classes. And um, I wish you a wonderful, beautiful, exciting, colorful year 2023.